In this video, I'm going to go over the choose one section type. Since that section type is mainly used for experiments, I figure the best way to explain it is to show you a basic experimental design. This, by the way, will be available to you if you type in this PSA code, which will also be on my website. You can come into this on your own and explore later. But if you come into this problem set, you can actually see in the section tree that there are multiple layers to this problem set. Now, the student won't know anything about this. This is really just for you, the designer. What happens is they come in and I want the students to progress linear from the message to the experiment to the post test. So this is a complete all linear order. The message is just a question. I tend to do this because um, a student's experience within this problem set will be different than normal. So I want them to know that they should expect that it will be a little different. I don't give them specific details. I'm certainly not telling them what the experiment is about. Um, what it just says is, first you'll have a chance to learn a basic skill, and then you'll be given two more questions. Because what normally happens when they're in a skill builder is they get the three right in a row, and they're done, they walk away. But this confuses students when they get more questions beyond the three right in a row. So that's why I put the message question in. Um, once they get the message question, they complete that, they move into the experiment, and this is the choose one section. So within the experiment section, here are the three children sections that I've created. So let's just imagine that we had one control section that I treat, uh, you know, let's say this is the business as usual skill builder, and then I have two variants that I want to test, call them treatment one and treatment two. And so that's all that exists within this choose one section. Something you should keep in mind though, is if I were to write a single problem and put that problem in here, it's literally choose one. So if there were a problem, some students would only get that problem and not any of these sections. Once a student comes into this, section, they're randomly assigned, and they will stay randomly assigned to that section. So if a student is assigned to treatment one, and they walk away for the day, when they come back tomorrow, they will still be in treatment one. I'm going to now test drive this just so that you could see what it would be like as a student. And uh, here we are, we're in the message, and the students don't know, they don't ever see the title of a problem. So we say, okay, my only option here is click, I'm ready and next problem. Now, obviously you wouldn't design your questions to tell the students what condition you're in. I did this just so we can see what has happened, and obviously we've been placed into the control group. I'll also point out that that message problem I had was in test mode. There was only, right an only one answer, and it was correct, and I didn't want the students to have to worry about whether they get it right or wrong. Um, now, if a student were to refresh, they would come back to this exact question because it's been assigned to them. But since we are using the test drive, I can refresh and I will not necessarily be put back into the same section. So in this case, I have now been placed into treatment two, which was a linear order, which is why I'm here at question one. And if we want to progress through this, uh, let's just do this as quick as I can. Okay, I made my three right in a row, and now I have moved on to the post-test. To show you what it's like from a student's perspective, I've gone ahead and I've assigned the basic experiment to myself, and I'm in here as a student. And the first thing I'm going to show you is that it is showing up as if it is a standard problem set. I'm going to show you later how to fix that. And if I come in, and now I'm in the actual assignment, so this is not the test drive. So I'm going to go past the message, and we've been placed into treatment one this time. If I hit refresh, I'm right back here at treatment one. So as a student, that never changes. And if I were to leave this and go away, I'd come right back and start here at this question. So the nice thing about that is that students, once they're placed into a condition, will stay in that condition. If you wanted this experiment to display as if it were a skill builder, uh, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to contact one of us. 
Um, even with a researcher account, there are some features that we don't release out to the general populace. And so what you do is you contact one of us here at Assistments and you just tell us the problem set ID and that you would like it to be displayed as a skill builder and we can take care of that for you. What we'll need is we'll need to know the list of questions that we would use in our R's. And generally what happens is, is most researchers pick their control condition. Usually that control condition came from us anyway. A lot of researchers take something that exists in assessments and modify it for an experiment. So if we have all of that information, we can manipulate some settings behind the scenes and turn it from from looking as if it's a complete all section into looking like a skill builder. I've gone into the settings behind the scenes and I've gone ahead and done just that. So you notice that it is now displaying as red and that's how a student would see it as if it were a skill builder. And I've also tied to it this skill builder for the R's system. And um, I'm just gonna show you one more thing. If you go into edit it, you get this warning message. The reason why you get this warning message is that somebody has started some of the problems in this assignment. Well, that was me when I was running it as if I were a student. And you can make changes, but the one thing you've got to worry about is that could affect how students progress through it, and they might have to restart. And that's why this warning message is there. So if you come into something you've built and you see this warning message, the good news is that means somebody is using it. And if you have any other questions uh, about that, about who's used it and whether or not you can easily change things, by all means, please contact us and we can look into that further.